touchdown. Today we're swapping my old squeaky serpentine belt and I just want to take a minute and talk about how you find the right serpentine belt for a Duramax because when I was looking for a new one I was having trouble finding which one was the correct one. Look this up, the serpentine belt up, there were, I don't know, probably 10 or 15 different options and maybe that's an exaggeration, I probably just made that up. So when you're looking for a belt for this truck, you're going to need to look at the RPO codes. The RPO codes are the old, are the hieroglyphic looking things in the glove box. An RPO code is a usually a three digit code that tells you a lot about the truck. It'll tell you what rear end and what gear ratio. It tells you which one of these you need. Because these came with a dual alternator option, single alternator, I think 105 amp, 145 amp, and there's a bunch of them. And so once you know the RPO code, you know which one to order. One service that has been extremely handy for me working on my own vehicles is rockauto.com. I feel it necessary to say I don't get paid anything from Rock Auto. I don't even look like a guy that's sponsored, so. But rockauto.com is one of the easiest platforms I've found online to find parts of your vehicle, and the most in-depth, too. All right, enough yammering, let's get to it. All right, I'm kind of cheating because I'm swapping my radiator out and I'm also putting a new intake in this. So I already have the access, so I'm gonna do my serpentine belt while I'm in here, and if you wanna watch those other videos to gain some knowledge, you can. Um, I thought I was gonna be a really big cheater, but I still have to loosen this fan shroud, which, if the radiator's in there, that's what I would do, is loosen this fan shroud. There's just one bolt on the top. You can give yourself some room to get to the idler pulley down, to get to the tensioner pulley down here. There's a, a half inch, or half inch ratchet drive in the idler pulley that we're trying to get to. I'll try to get some close up shots down in here. We're gonna remove the top bolt. Yeah, that should give us enough wiggle room to get our breaker bar down in there. Let's give it a try. Don't keep your bolt in your hand like I'm doing, like an idiot. This will be one of those times where a serpentine belt tool will be really handy. All right, I'm going off tripod here for a second, so forgive the shaky movement. So you can see right where my breaker bar goes down, right there into the tensioner pulley. So all I did was remove that top bolt and that gave me enough play. You'll do the same thing with radiators in there. There really isn't much difference. All right, let's get this old belt out of there. Make sure you pay attention to your routing when you're taking it out. There should be a diagram on the truck somewhere. I don't even have the cover that has my diagram on it anymore. So I'm gonna have to look it up or just hope I get lucky the first time. All right, I'm gonna pull the rest out through the bottom of the truck. When you look, I, I'm not gonna get a good filming angle there, but when you look at, up to the bottom, you'll see the bottom of the crank and where the belt goes. And I'm also gonna feed the new one up through the bottom and try to get it around the tensioner pulley first. All right, I'm just getting finished routing this belt. I would definitely recommend doing this to the friend so someone can push the belt up from the bottom while you're pulling up. And it, it's a tight, tight squeeze, it doesn't matter. And I would definitely recommend removing the air box like I have here, because you need to get your hand down into the tensioner pulley. So I'm gonna finish routing this. My goal is to have the last pulley that goes on be the alternator. One thing I'd highly recommend, and I would say it's a must, is to do this, put the new belt in with clean gloves. Don't get any fluids of any sort on it. Belts like to work clean and dry. I think I did it. This is like when you sell one of those little Chinese puzzle boxes or something and you do it the first time. This was not as hard as I made it out to be in my head. 
All right, so I'm gonna go around and make sure the belt's on all the pulleys the correct way. You'll you'll know. The outside of the belt goes on the smooth pulleys. The inside of the belt goes on the groove pulleys. It's it's pretty simple to figure out the routing just in your head. Um, and just really pay attention, pay attention to what you're doing and take it out. All right, I'm gonna jump down low and check everything out. All right, I'm good to go. I'm gonna bolt the fan shroud back up and work on getting my new intake put in and putting the radiator back in. Here's a quick tip I'll throw somewhere in the video. You can save your old belt for your emergency belt. It's, there's no sense in going to buy a $30 belt to throw in your back seat when you can get easily 100,000 miles of these belts, if not more. So just put a rubber band around this thing, throw it in your back seat, and when doom strikes, you have one with you. All right, that was a quick one for you guys today. Pretty simple, easy, straightforward, but a few tips and tricks in there for you. Again, thanks for watching. It means a lot to me that you do that. And please like and subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell so you know when my next videos come out. And I'll see you next time on You Break It and Fix It.